Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey is not very far away. In fact, it's in Waikiki, and we are going to meet the doctors of Waikiki. Now, of course, you know that we only do dear friends, and my goodness, this is a dear friend. We're going to meet Dr. Alan Wu. Now, I have to tell you how I met Dr. Wu. It was a December day, and I was in such pain with my knees needed to be taken care of. And like a real junkie, you know, oh, I've got to have a shot. I've got to have a shot. So I called Tripler first thing Monday morning, and I asked the nurse that answered the phone if I could have a doctor to give me a shot of cortisone. And then he says, oh, well, there are no doctors here. And I said, no, 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 no. Everybody in Tripler can do this. Everybody knows how to give a shot. So he says, well, we have a brand new doctor just arrived and he came from Afghanistan. I said, I want him. He knows how to put people back together. I want him, I want him today. So I got to be his very first patient after he came back from Afghanistan and I will not let go. He is now a civilian in his own business in the doctors of Waikiki. So I want you to meet the best doctor in the whole world. And if you repeat it, you say Marcia told you so. So Dr. Alan Wu, I am so pleased to see you. And you Thank you, my great. dear. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. You know, we just talked about you being in the military and how long were you in the military? Because of course, when I met you, you were at the winding down your career in the military. You got an award, if I remember correctly. You had, what, 12, 7,000 patients or something like that, 7,000 patients in Afghanistan and never lost one. Is that correct? Did I get That's that? That's correct, ma'am. That's correct. You see, I told you he was the best in the world. And if he could put that many people back together and not lose one, then I hold on to him tightly. <laughs> so tell, tell us about your career in the military. So ma'am, I, I did um, serve 15 years, five years, uh, four years in the reserve and 11 as a active duty doctor. I trained at Walter Reed in DC. Um, where I was an internal medicine uh, physician. I also did hospitalist work and uh, I got deployed multiple times. And uh, when I first met uh, Ms. Joyner was back in December of 2011 when I came back from my tour in Afghanistan after 12 months being there. Um, there I was um, one of the doctors on the front line uh, on a farm out in um, northwest of Afghanistan, uh, right at the Pakistan border, close to the Pakistan and Afghanistan Himalaya border. And there was a very hot zone, what we called it. Um, I actually came as an emergency replacement for a doctor who got uh, injured while six hours boots on ground. That's how hostile the, that we went to was. Uh, and I was at that time the battalion surgeon uh, for the 10th Mountain Division. So we were there uh, for about a year. And fortunately, I did see about 7,000 patients. Um, we did not pronounce anybody at when they reached my end. So I have to say I haven't lost anybody while I touched them. Um, but there are definitely other soldiers that lost their life during that conflict. Oh, that, I'm sure that. I am sure I that. Did, did not arrive to my era, but we were the first line docs. Um, usually after me, I, my job was to stabilize them and ship them out to Bagram where we had our bigger hospital, bigger echelon of care. And there they would do the best to uh, revitalize them. We saw a lot of patients and uh, we did a lot of good deed and we we're trying to win the hearts and mind of the Afghani national at that time also. So we took care of a lot of Afghani uh, 
personnel that have privileges on our base. And our, our FOB was um, heavily attacked. We got attacked daily. Um, there was mortar rounds that were inbound. So you could imagine the hostile environment that we lived in for about a year. Uh, but wow. I, that also made us a little bit better about handling stressful situation like the current pandemic that we're in. Um, again, I feel like we're thrust into the front line here. Again. Um, and then uh, we're, we're trying to take care of now, not just the soldiers, but, but our entire Ohana, our, our Kaimainas, everybody who lives uh, in Hawaii and who call Hawaii home. And we're very proud of that. I'm a local boy. I'm very happy to be part of this. And, you know, after I met you, I got to go on to even better assignments, you know, being- the, Yes, you did. You left me. <laughs> yes. I was, a, I was a chief of flight surgery. I got selected from flight surgery school. So I went and became a flight surgeon and did special ops for about four years before I finally um, got out of the military and say, hey, this is, is uh, enough uh, abuse on my body and I, I can't do, I can't jump out of a UA-60 with uh, 400 pounds on my body. And, oh. Yeah. So, well, now I have to tell you my one little sh story here. I was in such pain and my knees needed to be replaced. And he said that he was going to give me the million dollar shot. So Triple is a training hospital. So he gathers all of these people to show them this million dollar shot. And so, you know, he does. And one of, one of the uh, corpsmen there said, why is it a million dollar shot? And you said, and I quote, you know, all those football players, those million dollar football players. Well, this is what they do to them when they get injured. They take them off the field, give them the shot and put them back in. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so even today, when I call your office and I say, this is Marcia Joyner. They said, do you want your million dollar shot? <laughs> <laughs> so not there. Sure. Uh, Definitely. Yes. So I, I don't know what's in it, some kind of formula. I have no idea, except that that's been the go-to, whatever that is. Yeah. No, so it's, that, it's, we, we, we're, we're always trained in different fields, especially in the military. So I was fortunate enough to train at Walter Reed in DC where we have orthopedics, sports medicine, and rheumatology. So you're able to adapt and absorb all the different skill set from a, a large, huge training facility in DC like this. And there you you're learn um, based on what we call evidence-based medicine, what is the best formula that you do a population study, which um, mixture of uh, medication to use to give you the best results with the most minimal side effects. And that's why it's, um, Think about it now. It's almost ten years. I think your 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 knees are still good. They're fabulous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now you are in the um, Princess Kaiolani Hotel, which is a beautiful place. And you have how many staff that speak how many languages? Um, our staff we, we have a total of thirty five staff. Um, they're all versatile in multiple languages. We have one of our front desk girl that is fluent in Korean, Mandarin, Japanese, and English. Wow. She's, she's Japanese uh, by heritage, but she worked in Korea for eight years. Uh, and then she married a gentleman from Beijing, China, where she learned her Mandarin. And then she also is very uh, well equipped in writing in Arabic. So we have very talented people. Here. That's just one. That's uh, one, yes. That's just one of my 35 staff. And we tend to attract a lot of uh, multilingual personnel because we do live in a very diverse. Yes, you do. <laughs> and we want people to feel comfortable when they come to Doctors of Waikiki because 
we want them to have that personal touch instead of calling a translation service that you can't see the individual across the screen. We want to have that capability of having a personalized translator right next to you. And I myself are fluent in uh, Mandarin, Taiwanese, and Cantonese. And my, my partner, Dr. Trapkowski, speaks Slavic languages. Um, and we, we have everything we have from Filipino um, um, to Spanish. We have a, a half, uh, one of my staff is half Chinese and half uh, Mexican. So she speaks fluent Spanish also. Wow. So we are very talented here. I'm very diverse. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, uh, and you have telemedicine, do you, or telehealth, what's it called? Yes, ma'am. We also have the capability to do telehealth and telemedicine. Our platform that we use is very widespread use is called DocSeeMe. Um, that is, we have the licensure for that to provide our patient base with the ability to do telemedicine and it works on almost the exact platform as this interview is. And that way we can see, talk. Of course, we still can't touch and examine you, um, but a lot of things we can, especially during this pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. Be able to see our patient and see how they're doing. And we can do counseling over the um, telehealth platform also. So we can provide reassurance and capability to uh, have prescription called in and mm -hmm. some orders for laboratory diagnostic, even without you coming in. But eventually we still want to make sure that we, we reached out and touched our patients too. Yeah. Now, uh, so you also have that beautiful automobile that you pick up people, the Tesla. Yes, ma'am. And we, now, where does that go? We used a Tesla before the pandemic started. It was, Waikiki is a very difficult place to navigate, especially if you're a foreigner. And if when you, all the streets begin with a K, right? That's right. And everything's a one way. And yes. the Tesla was used during that time as a mode of picking up patients in the Waikiki area. And during the pandemic, since we don't have um, a large amount of um, patients in the Waikiki area, we have not been utilizing it as much due to the fact that we did not want to expose our, our drivers to um, catching. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So that vehicle right now is utilized more for um, delivering lab results and picking up equipment and dropping off lab specimen. And so we, we got to utilize it differently. And then that would spin also, um, if there's, there's, there's certain case by case scenario, if somebody is really in the bind, we will send out the car to pick up our patients. Okay, now that tell us uh, exactly, since this is a pandemic, what you're doing, uh, you with the drive-through now tell us about that what what does what does that mean drive-through so, and you've got all of that hotel so what what's the drive yes yeah, so what we did here at doctors World waikiki is we I, i'm a retired army doc so I, I have all these acronyms in my my uh my arsenal so what i implied was having what we call a triple tp meaning you need testing, you need treating, you need track and tracing, and the P stands for the most important thing, public support. Without all four, we would have never kind of entered to flattening the curve. And because we implemented that, that helped us flatten the curve. We have to say, out of the 35,000 tests conducted statewide, us as a small, moderate size urgent care has contributed to a large percentage of testing that's been done. We first started with the first responder. We wanted all the first responders to come in to get checked, to make sure that if they're concerned about their exposure, because they're still out and about picking up patients and making sure everybody's 
well, right. we wanted to make sure that they feel safe when they go home. Just like me, I'm at the front line. I have a one-year-old at home. I have a 10-year-old at home. I have 70 year old parents at home that I support. So I want to make sure that when I take care of patients, when I go home, they're safe. I don't want of course. my family members in jeopardy due to my profession. And we, we felt the concern of the first responders. So we were the first one to do a drive for all the first responders. And they got all their testing. They got either a, um, what we call a rapid test from Celex. This is the, the rapid blood test. It's uh, FDA approved. This one is. Um, it's a blood test, huh? Yes. It's not the we, nasal. Do the, we do the nasal swab also. And then now we have um, capabilities was a uh, partnership with uh, clinical labs of Hawaii. If you've heard on the news, it's Venus blood draw for antibody right. testing too. So what that really tell us is, is somebody exposed to uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. And when they become positive, we kind of can identify those individuals. Say, are they still symptomatic? If they are, they will get the PCR swap. And to do a confirmatory, we will be drawing blood now since we have that new capability. So whatever that is available outside, we will obtain it to help our community. We, as a private entity, can move a lot faster than a public entity due to the lack of bureaucracy and uh, red tape that we don't have to deal with. And, oh, yes. <laughs> and remember, all of these testing is voluntary. So I'm so happy that the public understands this and they all want to sign up. And we're still doing uh, a lot of testing right now for the general public now because we have completed most of the first responder. You know, the first weekend I did the drive, I did about 500 first responder, police, fire, EMS in three days. And that was exhausting, but we did it. My staff is amazing. I, we could never have done this. So, so the drive through is through the hotel, since nobody's at the hotel, through the yeah. garage? Yes, we had to get special permission. I have to basically sign my life away to make sure that I, I'm totally responsible for the entire- For the hotel, huh? <laughs> the, the whole structure. And that, that was a huge thing, but I was able to convince the hotel to um, let me utilize that. And we did that. Um, that was the first drive. And then of course we continue to do in-clinic testing throughout that. Then two weeks later, we were able to do another big drive like that this time to include the essential workers include those people, the flight attendants, pilots, um, the bankers, the healthcare workers, um, the, the grocery people, you know, anybody who's still working and deemed essential by our state, we offered this test to them. And we did a great thing. We did you a- You did, and that includes me, because my yeah. daughter, <laughs> my daughter who's an RN, a hospice RN, insisted that I be tested because Kenneth has this Agent Orange thing. And to keep me from bringing home something, she insisted that I go see you and have the test, which came back negative. Thank you. I, I can't dis disclose that without your permission on air. So I'm glad you disclosed it yourself. <laughs> but yes, that is, um, that's part of my job is to make sure that you and Kenneth is well taken care of too. Yep, but she said, as a caregiver, as a caregiver, I needed to be tested because I do go to the grocery store and what have you. And she said, rather than bring something home, I needed to be tested. So that's what I did. Yes. And and you did that horrible nose thing. That I'm nasal. sorry, but that, that's for I know that you don't have it. <laughs> You know, and you're clear and uh, clean bill of health. Oh, yeah. That, so now you're back to treating normal people with asthma or whatever. Uh, or is it, are you still seeing this caseload of people being tested? We have never faltered from our objective that's taking care of anybody who needs urgent care. 
but it's just uh, as an urgent care center, we also wanted to make sure that we are supporting our community by doing these testing. But we, throughout the drive, we still have our, our clinic operational, we're still taking care of the colds, the asthmas, the gout, the broken hands, the broken nose. We're still taking care of all of that in, on top of all the testing we're doing. So we have not slowed down. We actually have um, expanded our, our staff number during this pandemic too keep up with the demand of healthcare that's during. Now you have some new doctors that I, I don't know because uh, I haven't been there for a while. So tell me about your new doctors. Well, we have three other physicians that's on board. Uh, one is a, another military physician who's still active guard right now currently. And he will, has shifts here because we do shift work here. Um, he does about 10 to 15 shifts a month um, so that he can see patients also in an urgent care setting. We also have another hospitalist doctor uh, from one of the big hospitals here who worked with me when I was at um, Hawaii Pacific Health um, and he's also here um, about six to eight, 10 shifts a month. And then we have my good dear friend that we, we went to med school together and he trained at Hershey, Pennsylvania, a great hospitalist and now is a medical director for a big insurance company. Um, and he's working remotely, but he doesn't want to lose his skill set from touching and caring for patients. So he is also here about, you know, five to six shifts a month and that right. they can keep their clinical skills um, well, you mentioned shifts, so we should tell people you're open till midnight. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yes. so we're we're operational daily. We're operational holidays, Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. We are operational because what we try to do is fill the gap, the void, just like this pandemic, where all all the different physicians' offices are closed right now we're able to keep our doors open because we have sufficient uh, personal protective equipment to keep my staff from uh, getting infected with this COVID and still offer um, quality healthcare for our population and our community. And we are open every day. We have not changed our hours. We did not truncate our hours during this whole pandemic. We are actually uh, very happy that we as a whole, as a team, decided to do this because we have seen so much new patients that we have never taken care of before. And they are all grateful for the service that we provide because they have no access to healthcare because their doctor's office is closed. closed. Yeah. And they, they call and call and nobody answers the phone call. And if you belong to a big hospital facility as a primary care, their hours are so truncated that you have to call between a certain hour to even speak with anybody, let alone see a provider. And that yeah. for us, we, we thought that this is a great way to serve the community, to make sure that we help those in need. And there's a lot of chronic um, medication, and chronic medical disease that needs to be addressed. And that's why we're here for. And well, speaking of chronic, I understand you are going to do a heroic trip tomorrow. Tell us about where you're going. Sure. Well, before we start into that, let people know that during this pandemic, the entire state of Hawaii has conducted about only 35,000 tests. Just alone on Oahu, we have over 1.2 million people. What that really equivalent to is only 2% of our entire population got tested. And to me, that's, that is a very staggering fact. And for tomorrow, what my team and working together with uh, the providers at Leahi Hospital is we are going to actually conduct testing for the entire staff at Leahi. Um, and they will be, we'll bring all the test kits and doing all the swabs and um, 
will be running a little drive for their, for, um, not only their providers, but also their, their maintenance workers, their, their house care workers, their kitchen staff, every single person that's on staff will get tested. And we are gonna make it zero out of pocket fee for them because that's kind of our way to say, hey. Well, I am so proud because we've heard so many horrible things about health, about uh, nursing homes and all of these things. I haven't heard anything bad about Hawaii. I'm sure it exists, but I haven't heard it. It's yes. not national news, but I think that what you're doing is just marvelous. And I'm sure that there are other um, healthcare facilities that need, that are in need, especially those where it's living in someone's home. That's, that's really scary. However, I am very proud of you and what you're doing and especially going to Leahi. And uh, that's just such a wonderful thing. And our Kapuna need care. And as an Asian population, most people, Asian people, historically take care of their people. So I'm very proud of you. And I think they're quite trying to tell me I'm running out of time. So it's been a pleasure visiting with you. Now tell us again where you're located and how we can meet you. Okay. So we're located at the Princess Kalani Hotel at uh, 120 Kalani Avenue. We're located on the lobby, if you haven't been here, with huge, where 5,000 square foot is an amazing facility. And please check our website at www.doctorsofwaikiki.com. If you're concerned, you want to get testing done, please register online. And we're taking testing by appointment only um, due to the fact that we want to make sure that there's social distancing and we don't want a big cluster of people. Well, again, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. All right. Aloha. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Aloha.